What is up guys? Welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, hello, my name is Rachel. I make a lot of lifestyle related videos and this is my very needy, young and playful baby girl, Larcy. She is a now nine month old golden retriever puppy. And in today's video, we are going to be talking all about crate training. I've had so many requests to do this video and share exactly how we personally crate trained our puppy Larcy because she does really, really well with it. But just as a quick disclaimer, I am not a dog trainer. I am not a dog professional in any sort of way. This is just how we personally trained our dog. Crate training is something that we knew we wanted to do from the beginning because it creates a safe, comfortable, and familiar environment for them. This is something that does take a lot of time, so it's something that you have to be very patient and consistent with in order for it to work and get a good experience. The more that you can associate it with a positive and relaxing environment, the more that they are going to enjoy it. You want them to see this as a place of security and independence, not a place of punishment. Deciding to have a crate not only protects your house and your household items from becoming destroyed or damaged, but it also protects your pet. And that's one big reason why we wanted to do this. Not only for the safety of our belongings, but the safety of her. If she is eating through a wall in the middle of the day while we're at work, that's not going to be really good for her health. So going through this, I'm going to break this down into 10 simple steps walking you through exactly how we personally crate trained our puppy. The first thing you need to do is find the right crate for your dog. So yes, your dog may be really little now, but depending on the breed, they're probably not going to be that little for very long. So crates can come in a ton of different shapes and sizes and materials, but one thing that we decided to go with was a wire crate, just so that way it's more sturdy and it was less likely that she could chew through it. So because they are going to be growing, ideally you want to get the right size for them it's if they were already full grown. So you can do this in two separate steps of getting them a smaller crate now and then working your way up to the big crate or you can just get the big crate now if you're able to start small and then slowly give them more room. So the crate that we decided to go with was a Midwest crate and the reason why we chose to do this is because that's the size that she will need when she is fully grown. We got one with two doors and a divider. So what we did is when she was really small we had the divider in and she was only allowed to use so much of the crate at a time and then as she grew when she got bigger we slowly moved the divider back so that she had more and more room as time went on. We eventually took the divider out completely I think when she was about six months old. One thing that I learned is that dogs typically like to sleep in the dark so that is why you will notice we always have a blanket over her crate for her so that way it keeps it darker and more private for her. The next thing you want to do, if you can do it, is make it comfortable, cozy, and welcoming. So add some blankets in there, add a bed, add some of their favorite stuffed animals. If you've got a blankie from their parents, make sure to put that blankie in there so that it is a nice, cozy, familiar environment for them. Now I say if because not all dogs want this. Some dogs don't want a lot of stuff in their crate. Some dogs are very destructive and will destroy things in their crate. Some dogs will eat through their bed. Some dogs will choose their crate mat as something to pee on, AKA Larcy. Larcy loved to pee on her crate mat. I have no idea why. Whether it was in her crate or outside of the crate, she always peed on it. So we ended up getting rid of it. We found that she actually just likes to sleep right on the crate mat, I think because it's cooler. And I read that a lot of dogs like to just sleep on the plain hard surface. So I I guess it's not that odd. We do choose to keep her blankie in there still just so that it's with her but usually she ends up pushing it off to the side and sleeping off of it anyways. Just a quick bonus tip whenever it comes to sleeping in the crate. One thing that was very helpful for us was getting her a snuggle puppy. She would not sleep through the night and just would not sleep like period until we got her a snuggle puppy. So it mimics the same like heartbeat and warmth as if a real puppy were snuggling and sleeping next to her. She slept in her crate every night until she was like, I wanna say five, almost six months old. And then we started letting her sleep with us. And now she primarily sleeps with us 
but she still sleeps in the crate sometimes. Because I never want her to fully get out of the habit of sleeping in there because if we were to go somewhere and someone was going to watch her or she was going to go to somebody's house, they're probably not going to want her to sleep in their bed with them. So the third thing that you want to do is get them used to it. Get them used to it being around. Let them walk around it, let them smell it, let them feel it out, and get them used to the sounds that it makes. So make sure that you're opening and closing the door so that they understand what it sounds like. Push on the crate bed so that they know it makes a little bit of a sound when they walk on it. And then next you want to start with baby steps. Start with baby steps and start with treats. This is again where creating a positive association with the crate is really going to start coming in. So you want to start small. Again, this is a very, very slow process, so be very patient with them. You want to start by putting a treat just right outside of the crate, somewhere near it. Then you want to put one right inside the door, and then slowly you want to work your way into putting a treat inside the crate and moving it further and further back so that they have to go into the crate a little ways in order to get to the tree. When we started doing this with Larcy, she would immediately get the tree and hurry up and scurry back out. And then as time went on, when she had to go in further and further, she got more and more comfortable with it. Once you get this down for a little bit, have them do a command while they're inside the crate to get their mind off of being inside the crate. And then you can play with them a little bit. Get inside the crate a little bit, play with the toy with them, throw around a ball. Just again, creating that positive association with the crate. One big thing here that I will say say and suggest is not to take them away from playtime in order to go into the crate because you don't want them to see it as punishment. If they're playing and you want them to go into the crate, they're going to want to go immediately outside the crate to continue playing. It was really helpful for us to, to have bedtime. like a code word. Good girl. Bedtime. That we could say, Good for girl. example, we would say, all right, let's go nap time. And she knew to go in the crate because we were going to work. Or we could say, all right, let's go bedtime. And she knew to go in the crate because we were now going to bed. Even to this day, every single time we leave her work, she gets a treat every single time she goes into her crate. We always keep treats right on top of that. They're ready to give one to her. Once you've got that step down and it seems like they're getting pretty comfortable with it, work on going just one step further. So now you're going to work on starting to get that door closed. So initially you want to start obviously really small, just close the door just a tiny bit and then open it back up when they come out. And then when they go in, do a little bit further, then a little bit further, a little bit further until you're able to close the door all the way with them in it. Maybe lock it for a quick second, immediately unlock it and let them right back out. You don't want to do this too soon or for too long at first because you don't want them to feel like they're going to be trapped. This is them getting used to being inside the crate and hearing the sounds and understanding that they are now completely closed off from outside of the crate, but they know that there is a direct way back out. And then once you can leave them in there for a couple of seconds, maybe feed them a treat from outside of the crate somewhere to distract them and get their mind off of it, and then let them back out so that they also know that they're doing a good job. Once you've made it up to this point, you can start to work on walking away. This is the really tough part. So initially, when you start to get to this point where they can be in the crate for a second, you can close the door, you can lock it, and they're not completely panicking. Just wander around the crate a little bit, lay by it, sit by it. But then when you start having to walk away, this is when it can get a little bit tricky because once you're out of their sight, they might start to panic. Whenever they're in the crate, you close the door, give them a treat, go around the corner, maybe just right outside of their sight and come right back and then maybe go into another room and close the door and then come right back and then once you get them used to being alone in there for 30 seconds a minute two minutes three minutes four minutes maybe go outside go get the mail come back in maybe go grab a cup of coffee come back in just slow spurts so that way you can work it up to them being in there for a longer period of time if you're in the same situation as us where you plan on having them be in their crate and crate trained while you are at work for a few hours before they come back out, you want to work up to this point instead of just starting it right away. A really good tip that was really helpful for us whenever we got to this stage was using a Binky Kong. She loves her Binky Kong and what we did is we would take her puppy peanut butter, fill it up, and freeze it so that way it worked longer and she really had to work to get the peanut butter out. But we would give her 
this puppy peanut butter filled frozen Kong, stick it in her crate with her whenever we are going to leave so that way she had a distraction. She had something for mental okay. stimulation to keep her going and keep her occupied mm -hmm. while we walk away. And if you do it enough, it's something that they also can look forward to so they know, ooh, if I get to go in the crate, then that also means that I get to have my binky. Another thing that you can do is simply just hide treats in there. So if they have a blankie inside their crate, put a couple of treats in a couple different areas underneath their blankie so they have to sniff them out and find it. That way it keeps them distracted for a minute so that way they're not worrying about, oh, where, where's mommy going? Where's daddy going? They're simply just focused on getting their treat. Now the next thing is working on making sure that they're not in there for too long, especially when they're puppies, because puppies have to go out very, very frequently. So ideally you don't want to be leaving them in there for hours at a time when they are very little. A dog doesn't want to go potty where it sleeps, just as you wouldn't want to go potty where you sleep. But if they're in there too long, they're not going to have a choice at some point and they're going to end up having accidents. If you're able to come home from work on your lunch break or on a 30 minute break or have a neighbor let them out or hire a dog sitter or a dog walker or someone to come over and let them out a couple times during the day so they don't have to have accidents in their crate. We have been pretty fortunate where she has never been in her crate for longer than three hours at a time while we are working. The next thing I want to go over is the return of when you end up coming back to take them out of the crate. So at this point, they're pretty comfortable with it, but we've only talked about leaving them. This is when you come back. So let's say you've been gone for two hours, don't come home in a high-pitched voice and all excited and hurry up and run in there and take them out of the crate. Nancy! Come back up, Nancy! because yes, it's gonna make them excited, and yes, you're excited, but that's going to build up anxiety for whenever you come home in the future. So you don't want them to be anxious awaiting you to come home. So what we found to be really helpful is to not immediately let her out as soon as you get home, and not to make such a huge deal out of it, just so that way they don't get worked up and they don't make such a big deal out of it. What we try to do is whenever we come home, we can come in, maybe get our clothes, change from work, take a second to do something else. You just don't want them to get in the habit of thinking, oh, okay, mommy's home. That means I'm going to get out of the crate right now. And then whenever you do open up the crate to let them out, open it calmly, let them go out, go about your business. Now the next thing that you want to think of and take into consideration is maybe getting a camera to watch them while you're gone. For me, this is really helpful just to help my anxiety of wondering what is she doing? Is she okay? Is she crying? I don't know what she's doing while I'm gone at work. We just have a basic camera where I'm able to check on her whenever I want to, just pop in, see what she's doing. And I have the ability to talk to her, but I try not to do that unless I'm like two seconds away from being home because if she hears Here's my voice, she's gonna be wondering where I am and she's gonna start looking for me and there goes that anxiety. I know that they have a bunch of like fancier ones where you can dispense treats to them. Another thing with this is that you also wanna think of your crate placement. So where are you going to be putting their crate? Are you going to have it in the living room? Are they gonna have their own room? Are you going to be put it in your room? We decided to put it in our bedroom. Her crate right here is actually right next to my husband's side of the bed because I figured she'd be most comfortable if she was near us and and next to us when she's sleeping and not somewhere completely alone. So that's what we found to be the most helpful for us is just having her close. And then the last thing I just want to address is how they go into their crate and what they go into their crate with. Ideally, you want them to have, if possible, nothing on. You don't want them to have clothes on or their collar or their harness just for the sake that if it were to get caught on something, you do not want them to get hurt. And the other thing is what they go into their crate with. So this kind of goes against what I said earlier, but it all depends on the dog. So if you have a dog who's not a big destroyer, doesn't really get into anything, like Larcy, Larcy does not destroy anything. She's like never chewed up a sock. She's never completely destroyed a toy. So if you have a dog who destroys their toys, destroys their beds, obviously that's not something that you'd want to have in their crate with them because that's not really protecting them from getting hurt on the outside of the crate if they're still going to be ingesting harmful things inside the crate too. 
And just as a quick bonus tip, having a travel crate is very, very nice. Especially if you decide to get the big metal crate like we did. This thing is heavy and it is a pain in the butt to have to break down and move around because it's so big. When we just went on our trip, I couldn't fit it in my car. So we end up having to get a travel crate and it's so nice to just leave it here, let it be, and then worry about a travel crate whenever we go elsewhere. I'd say it took a couple weeks for her to get like fully comfortable with her crate, but I feel like she warmed up to it relatively fast, especially because we took it slow. And now we leave her crate open all the time and she will freely go in there on her own and come back out. Her crate is actually pretty easy to clean. I vacuum it out and wipe it down with soap and water once a week. So that is how we did it. That is how we crate trained our baby girl, Larcy. If you enjoy puppy videos or just lifestyle related videos in general, make sure that you subscribe because that is all the types of stuff that I post here on my channel. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you let me know by hitting the like button. If there's any more like informational videos that I can do, let me know in the comment section and I would be happy to make it for you. If you're not already, make sure that you follow us on Instagram. And as always, we will see you guys in our next video. Bye guys. Check out.